Let's talk about getting started with our PWM project. You're doing a Salon and Key second order low pass filter for your um, DAC project. So I thought I'd use an example of another second order filter that uses two op amps instead of one. We can see for the derivation that it's pretty easy in that if these op amps are ideal, we see a buffer, we see a buffer. We can use voltage division to come up with a low pass filter time a gain of one times another low pass filter times a gain of one. And you can work through the math in the S domain. Now, then we just use the reverse lookup table a little Laplace transform and we get our time domain response. Now in the project, you need to show your current directions and voltage drops, write the nodal equation, solve for HS, and then prove that the system is indeed critically damped. This circuit, it's um, you don't really need all those nodal equations, you just need to know that that's a buffer, that's a buffer, and then voltage division. How do you prove critical over under? Well, you take the transfer function, HS, and then you can notice that there's only one root here so that um, it would be critically damped. Now, if we multiply out this characteristic equation and say that that's, um, that's B and that is C, well, B squared equals 4 times AC, and we can see that it's critically damped. So let's do this step response. Well, here's our theory. And tau, in this case, would be RC, which should be 10 microseconds. But how long do I keep this one volt step high, or how long do I, will I let the simulation flow for um, before I stop it? Um, in first order systems, you could always say 5 tau. But here we have two exponentials, and one of those exponentials is multiplied by time. So as this is getting smaller, the T part is getting bigger. Well, what I did was is set the critically damped response equal to a first order response at 5 tau, and I just stepped it numerically in terms of 1 over tau until that inequality held true and not quite sure why but it comes out very close to tau times 5 times the square root of 2 um, which in this case is about 70 microseconds. Now to make sure that I don't notice any overshoot I'm going to let the simulation go for 10 times tau. You can download this file yourself, of course. So at, at uh, 70 microseconds, we can see that the vertical response is at 0.993 volts, which is very close to what 1 e to the minus 5 would be. So that worked out. I can see an S-type curve. And then even though I've let it go for 10 tau, I see no overshoot. So this is a critically damped step response. Include this plot in your report, except for the Salon and Key low pass filter. Now real op amp models and real op amps have offsets and nonlinear, you know, things that can be modeled but are beyond this class. Something you might notice is that they don't start and end exactly at zero. Um, I'm not going to go into it in this class. This is a follow-on class. But if you notice it, it's just due to non-idealities of the op amp or offsets. There's offset voltages between these two pins that can cause uh, this to rise up. There's also leakages in these pins that can cause that to rise up. Again, if you notice it or you see it, just remark upon it. You can read the data sheet and come up with a reasonable explanation. But again, in the report, when you notice something that isn't exactly to theory, you need to talk about it. 
So here I was using a very ideal op amp model, a level one. It's a university. It's a universal op amp model, level one. So it it behaves exactly like theory. Here it does not. All right. Now, in order to measure the the worst case ripple, we use a 50% duty cycle, 200 kilohertz square wave, to measure it. And so this 50% duty cycle should give us one half of whatever our step is. And you can see that, yeah, it's averaged about 0.5. The capacitor voltages start off at zero, so it takes a few clock cycles before it's averaging where it should be. This is where you zoom in to measure the, spi um, the ripple. But you can do a trick. Here, it takes about 80 microseconds to get to where you want to go. Um, I can start with a initial condition to where it'll go to the average value sooner, which I can see right here. So then I zoom in on this area. You can download this in the as well. But this is the plot that you need to include. Where I measure from here to here, it's uh, 8.7 millivolts. And then you need to do this calculation, which in this case gave me an effective number of bits of 5.56 bits. So you have to include this calculation. And then something else, how does your effective number of bits vary with a 10% change in RNC? This is quite difficult to do by hand, if at all possible. So really, all you have to do is change R and C up by 10, see what happens, change them down by 10, and see what happens. You don't have to include a plot for that. You can just uh, report your measured results. Now, this is a filter. And we can get a Bode plot by running an AC response that you get from here. Now, sometimes you'll notice that you're not starting at 0 dB, which means V out equals V in. You get like around minus 20 or some very weird value. What that means is you didn't put a voltage offset of 1 volt. Because notice, we're at VDD of 5, but this side of the op amp is just tied to ground. And so if we had a sine wave on this form, half of it would be being clipped. So I just raise the sine wave by one volt, and you get that. So again, if you see this weird thing, just put a one volt value on that voltage source. Now let's just measure the cutoff frequency. Because it's a second order system, we choose to measure it at minus 6 dB because the cutoff frequency is easily determined at that point to be around 16 kilohertz and lo and behold it's about 16 kilohertz now you can calculate how does the 10 percent change in RNC affect that you can and you can verify it in simulation but you don't need a you don't need three plots you really just need this one now in your project the cutoff frequency will be lower than you expect and really, that's because the open loop gain changes with frequency and limits the bandwidth. So at 10 kilohertz, right, for example, the open loop gain is 36.9 dB, which for a buffer, um, which then makes open loop gain equal to 95.5, all right? And at 15 kilohertz, it would be even smaller. So I'll that small of an open loop gain can start to affect your circuit's performance. And part of the project is you need to calculate the open loop gain with a buffer with a one volt input at these values. All right. Now you don't have to do it in LT spice. Um, you can just use hand calculations, but it needs to be there. So this slide just says that again. Calculate the effect of open loop gain on a buffer with a one volt input at these values. Because the step voltage is one volt. 
Well, we can just put in one volt as a DC, and at that point, the capacitors are open. No current is supposed to flow because these are ideal op amps. And on your saloning key, there'd just be one stage. So that's you've done that calculation and homework, so I'm not going to go over it again here. Then we have to look at how does the VDD vary with 10% tolerance and resistors. This was a homework. Here we're just doing an OPT simulation. These are actual real resistor values. The 100 and 300, uh, as pointed out by a student, uh, really hard to buy. And so you get 5.02. All right, so how do these resistors affect the circuit's performance? Now you can hook up your circuit take this whole part of the circuit and replace it with this right here. But the simulation might take a little bit longer. Or you can calculate what would happen and then just change VDD accordingly. I'll give you the freedom to do that. This file is located here. Other things that you need to do is, hey, how does the effective number of bits oops, vary with 10% tolerance? How does the cutoff frequency vary with these? Use these notes as a guide as to what to include in your project. This homework really should be your final report, except you just haven't added a picture of your fabricated circuit, the measured results, and the analysis section trying to explain the differences between hand calculations, LT spice, and measured results. I do have another video on the testing of the DAC um, that you can find in Canvas.